DVD-based navigation systems are showing up in more and more cars these days, most of them luxury cars. So they are starting to trickle down to the more affordable kind. They might seem a kind of frivolous thing to have, but it turns out they can make driving and navigating a lot safer than using a map. But are they the best way of finding your way around without being distracted? We headed to Iowa to find out. Here's Patty Kim. Driving is an exercise in distraction. If it's not the phone... Stupid phone always rings, right? Yeah, that's fine. It's trying to figure out where you are. I really didn't plan for this to happen at airlines, you know. They... Or where you should be. Hey, I can't find this place I'm supposed to go to. Where are you? What's your address? Add bad weather and traffic together and you have all the elements of a disaster. I think driving is, a, is an extremely demanding task and I think also that people, including myself, sometimes underestimate just how hard it is. Look, I, I really have to be able to, to be there. and It's downright dangerous. This car may change all that. It's fully loaded to study driver distraction and stress. On the instrument panel, you can see a number of cameras that are able to track facial features and eye movements as the driver is navigating around the roadways. Back here, we have two workstations where experimenters can plug in the tablet PCs to measure the effects of driving stress. We have a very accurate GPS system that gives us position information down to centimeter accuracy. The most amount of technology, of course, we put into the trunk because we wanted to keep the appearance of a normal car. And we put in about six or seven computers. We deploy all this technology in an attempt to measure how hard the person is working when he or she is doing a driving test. The eye movement system and all the other cameras that we have help us observe what's going on during a drive. This is the most important tool of all. It monitors the driver's brain. So we measure that with 128 electrodes on the person's scalp and we pick up bioelectrical signals that the brain puts out when it performs the different uh, actions as you drive down the highway. To see it all in action, we hit the streets with engineer Tom Schnell and his student guinea pig, Jeff Cones. So I want you to navigate us to this location using the paper chart. The first test is a situation most drivers are familiar with, trying to steer and follow a map at the same time. Yep, now just navigate us to this location. It's not as simple as it seems. According to the eye tracking technology, Jeff is seriously distracted. Now that he's using a paper chart, he constantly has to divide his attention between uh, what's outside the windshield and what's on the chart, as well as watching his speed. So he has to divide attention. Not only is Jeff's brain working overtime, there are fewer alpha waves, a sign of anxiety. It's relatively stressful because uh, he's using uh, a paper chart and navigating around in a strange place. Now, Schnell tries to reduce his student suffering. Although Jeff will drive the same course, he has the help of a GPS instead of a map. So the main advantage of a, a moving map display and a navigator like the one that we're using now is that it gives you turn-by-turn -turn directions and it shows exactly where you are uh, relative to the roadway network. Jeff is now less stressed and it shows in his brain. Now he doesn't have to divide his attention as much between the outside and the inside. And that the voice gives him guidance and all you have to do is essentially follow the instructions. So cognitively it's a much easier task as well. Schnell isn't finished with him yet. He wants to see how Jeff performs with a heads-up display. The driving directions now appear in the windshield, so he doesn't have to take his eyes off the road, something that's confirmed by the eye tracker. Now he doesn't even have to look down here very much at all, further reducing his overall workload. As it turns out, driving with a heads-up display is the least stressful of all. We would expect much less of a need to look away from the windshield which is a safety feature. Less workload, less stress, more of an ability to focus on the uh, roadway ahead, fewer distractions, in my opinion substantially safer. 
But if the heads-up display or GPS system aren't simple, they can backfire and actually make the driver even more stressed than before. Schnell's research may help make them better. We are actually uh, developing a tool that can be used by the automobile industry to develop better interiors of cars. We hope to be able in the long run to give them a tool that allows them to design cars that are safer and that will save lives. Still lost. How are you guys doing with the meeting? His research could even lead to cars that detect danger when a driver's stressed before the driver even knows it. I think that they will have cameras in the dashboard that measure the facial temperature that uh, through some remote sensor will know how fast your heart is beating and how many breaths of air you're taking. Will people wear sensors on their heads? No. As for Jeff, he already suffers enough stress as an engineering student, but it was worth it. In other developments today, Armadillo Aerospace's mock lunar lander hovered for a record time, making it a serious contender for this year's lunar